Hey everyone, it's late November, it's almost Thanksgiving, and it's time to start putting some of my beds to rest. Now, when I planted this bed, which is the most southwestern bed that I have in my backyard, I planted asparagus on this side and strawberries on this side. They are really good companion plants. But the thing is, is that the asparagus is starting to really encroach onto my strawberry side, which right now I'm not that unhappy about. Uh, but it does look like a big uh, a mess. And when I first did this video, a lot of people asked the question, what do you do to overwinter your asparagus and your strawberries? Well, I'm gonna show you that on this episode of Garden State Growing. So on this side, as you can see, I have all my strawberries and these were the ever bearing strawberries that I got from fast growing trees. I got them as crowns and I planted them. They did not produce the way I would have loved to this year, but I'm not sad about that. I think next year is going to be a beautiful harvest. And then over here is what we're talking about mostly uh, is the asparagus and what to do to overwinter them. I know. All right, so for those of you who do not know, asparagus is a perennial that will grow back every year. Um, this year, I did not even try or taste any of these asparagus. I have the Mary Washington down over there. And then over here, I have the Jersey Supreme and the Purple Knight, I think it is. And uh, I'm not sure on that third one. But anyway, so now we're saying, okay, so why didn't you eat any of them? Well, you need this plant to grow back um, at least two to three years before you start harvesting. On the second year, you could harvest uh, a couple. On the third, you could do a lot more. By the fourth or fifth, you can go to town and have uh, just beautiful asparagus all year long. And again, that is depending on the quality of the health and the care of the plant. I know people that have, on their second year, got bushels of asparagus. So it is about how well you take care of it. But I did make the decision not to harvest any asparagus from this bed. And so now we're at the point where it's November 20th, and as you can see, I took off my jacket because it is really actually that hot today. And uh, we're talking about what we need to do to overwinter this, to protect these plants from the, from the cold and the frost and the uh, snow. And uh, a lot of people are really tempted to just go right ahead and, you know, grab their little clippers that they have and just start pruning these back. Now, in my opinion, that would be a, a big mistake. A lot of these asparagus ferns, as you can see here, are still very green. I mean, there are definitely some brown and dying, but there are still some tremendously green ones that are growing. And um, all of that photosynthesis that's going on in these green ones is still gonna help to feed those roots. I know there's the opinion of, you know, you cut back all the tops, and that causes the roots to focus on nutrition. But what I want this to do is focus on getting that sun's nutrition until the very last drop into those roots. So I'm not gonna cut any of these back. This is actually going to uh, create a, a beautiful air pocket mulch uh, for these plants that's gonna help to protect them over the winter. Now, what I am going to do though is I'm going to go through the base of this bed and see if I find any weeds. Now, as you can see, there's a huge mat of like dead and fallen asparagus ferns that, are, that have already created like a good two inch uh, of, of airy insulation mulch on top of the soil. I love it, but I'm gonna go around and if I find any weeds, I'm gonna pull them out and obviously grass. This is not an asparagus, this is grass. Ugh. Well, I'm going to find the ball of that grass and I'm going to remove that. So I'm going to do that and then I'll take you to the next step. We head for the sky, it's all right. Our wings wouldn't fly, it's all right. If we are crashed. Okay, guys, so that really only took me about five minutes, if that, to do that. I just went around and I pulled out any grass, uh, which seemed to be the main weed that was hiding in here. So, what I mainly wanted to do was I just wanted to pull back. When you can see the sun is going that direction, it is going west right now in a southerly arc across the sky from east to west uh, and the asparagus all wanted to grow in that direction 
So it was laying on top of my strawberries and I didn't necessarily want that. Uh, so I pulled them all back and I kind of just layered them all into the center. Like I said, I'm not gonna prune them back because they're still green, they're still putting uh, some nutrients into the roots, except for the fact that Chance decided to have a play date with my asparagus about five minutes ago. I don't know what caused that. This is how I overwinter my asparagus bed. Chance, get out of the garden. Chance, get out of the... Do you see what I have to deal with? Get out, come on, go. So, what is this? What is this? This is Easy Straw. I do buy this off the internet. I forget what company I bought it from. Uh, oh, the Hardware Corporation. I think it was like Ace Hardware or something like that, or no, it was another hardware store. I'll try to put a link up, or a picture at least, so you can know where I got this from. And I like to use this instead of just uh, the garbage mulch that I get as a weed protector and a soil nutrient for outside of my beds because this is 99 or 95%, 99% seed free. That's what I want. I want protection of straw, but I do not want to add a whole bunch of weed seed to my garden beds. So I'm not going to just take this and cover the top. I'm going to actually take handfuls of this and I'm going to gently layer it down on the base of all these asparagus plants and try to create, which is done for itself very well on its own by dropping these dead and falling off ferns here um, that look very typical to like dill and uh, creating a mat. I was very careful not to remove that when I was weeding. So I'm just going to go around. I'm going to take this and I'm going to apply it all around the bases of this and I'm going to take it over. I'm gonna do the same thing to my strawberries. I'm not gonna cover my strawberries. I'm gonna weed around them. I'm going to uh, pull out anything, even though like some of the weeds that are growing is actually lettuce from the bed that's right next to it. I'm still gonna pull them out because I really don't want them here. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna layer that around. So the next time you see this bed is gonna be the final product and I'll tell you a little bit about it. I am going to endorse this product even though I am not in any way sponsored by this product. I bought this out of my own money because uh, no one wants to sponsor me. But anyway, so what I did was I took this straw and what I really liked about it was it's very finely ground up. As you can see, it's not big long strands. So it made it very easy when I wanted to take a handful of this and go into the center and actually massage this down into the roots of the center, I could just take it and push it and lift up and get those ferns free of it and just keep on tucking it in and tucking it in into my heart's desire. I did lay this down about two, probably in some areas, maybe six inches thick. It said it was gonna cover 500 square feet. Uh, this bed is 144, I just call it uh, 150 or a butt ton. And um, yeah, I really didn't expect it, but I probably only used about a third of this bag, which is a lot better than I anticipated. So let me bring you in right now, and I'm gonna show you how I did this bed and why I did what I did. So here you have it, the asparagus plants. And like I said, this mulch is so easy to put down. It's weed free. You just take it, massage it in under the roots in the middle, lift up the ferns to get them out of it, uh, a good, two, four, six inches deep, as deep as it, as you can get away with. Uh, some of these asparagus were actually putting out berries this year. Do not eat these berries. Uh, and then I'll take you over to where I did my strawberries. And on this, it was even easier. I just literally dumped a whole pile in the middle and then I just took it and spread it around. And where I thought there was a plant covered, I just kind of lifted up the leaves and uh, so they can get some sunshine. See like there's one in the middle here. All right, there we go. But now they have a nice thick layer of mulch all around them. 
So that is it for this episode of Garden State Growing. There was a lot of people that commented when I planted these asparagus on what I was gonna do to overwinter them. So right now, here is your answer, including a little bonus of my strawberries because they were in the same bed. So if you did like this content, please give it a share. Share it with your friends, your family, anybody. Please help me out. Make sure that you hit that like button. And if you wanna see a lot more content like this, make sure you hit that notification and you will get notified every single time I put out a new video. Thank you so much. I love you. Have a great evening and I'll see you on the next episode.